Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. Now, a couple of chemistry videos which I had planned um, for the last month, they're taking a lot longer than I expected, uh, simply because I'm waiting for some stuff in the mail, which just hasn't come yet. And I haven't uploaded a video in a month, so I uh, thought I'd upload another episode of the computer from Transistors project. Uh, if you haven't realized, um, these computer from transistors videos, they're basically my backup videos really because uh, the the number of views and the amount of watch time that I get from these videos is, I don't know, pretty much nothing compared to the chemistry stuff that I do. But anyway, seeing as I can't make a chemistry video right now, uh, we're stuck with doing this for a little bit. Now we'll get this out of the way and uh, explain what we're doing today. If you'll remember the last episode of this series, uh, we put together this circuit, which was a circuit that was capable of storing one bit of memory, or like a, a one or a zero. And it could remember that, you could access uh, that memory bit, uh, you could write to it, you could read it, uh, you could input data, you could turn it on and off. Anyway, basically with this circuit, uh, I'll draw out the simplified version of it. So what this circuit would basically do, uh, provided that you have these two enable lines, if you've got uh, a signal going into both of those, so 5 volts on both of those pins, then you could pick, you could put 5 volts on the read input or on the write input, and then uh, say if you've got the, the write input on, then you'd be able to input whatever is on uh, this data line, whether it's on 5 volts or off 0 volts, and you could store that in the one bit of memory that was held within the circuit. And then if you were instead to put uh, 5 volts on the read input of the circuit, then uh, the data line uh, that would be brought up to 5 volts if the, the bit of memory that's in the circuit was uh, at an on state, or it would be uh, at zero volts if the memory was in a low state. Basically, you just uh, send out whatever data was held within the bit of memory. Now, the really good thing about this circuit, really, is the fact that you can put multiple of them in parallel. Uh, provided that you only want to access one at a time, uh, what you can do is put them all in a row. Say I've got eight of them here. Uh, and then you can just connect all of the read lines uh, all of the write lines and all of the data lines all together. So what you get is just one wire for reading data, one wire for writing data, and one wire that actually holds the data. And like I said before, provided that you only activate uh, one of these circuits at a time using these uh, enable wires up the top here, so say you only put uh, this enable wire on or at 5 volts, then only uh, this circuit will actually be working uh, so anything you're doing with the whether you want to read uh, from that circuit or write to that circuit along this data line uh, you can do it with just that circuit and then you can change if you want to access a different bit of memory you can change which one you're activating with the enable lines and get different data or write different data so really if you make enough of these circuits and chain them all together like i have over here you can actually get quite a large amount of memory storage there's a problem, however, that arises when you uh, start to get really, really large numbers of these circuits, say maybe 64 uh, memory locations, and that's the fact that you need one enable wire for each circuit. Because the, the read, the write, and the data, you only need one of those for like the whole, the whole set. Uh, but the enable wires, we've got one for each one, and you can imagine like having 64 of these, you'd need 64 wires just to be able to write to any one of those that you wanted. The solution to this problem of having too many wires is actually to put each individual circuit in like a 2D grid like this, and then seeing as we have two enable wires, uh, you can actually put a whole set of wires going horizontally along the grid, uh, the horizontal wires activating uh, one of the uh, to enable inputs and then have another set of wires going vertically down the grid and the other vertical lines uh, will control the other enable wire. 
So using this system, instead of having 64 wires for our 64 circuits, uh, we only have 16 wires, uh, which is quite a reduction. And using this setup, you can see uh, maybe if we want to access this uh, bit of memory here, all we need to do is turn this wire on, so wire number five of the, uh, the vertical lines and wire number four of the horizontal lines. And if we just turn on uh, this wire here and this wire here, we'll have only turned on one of our circuits and that's exactly what we want. Uh, just pretend that all the, the read lines and the write lines and the data lines, they're all connected together. The drawing was getting a little bit complicated and I didn't want to mess it all up. And so with this configuration of the memory, uh, the number of wires that we need is actually reduced. So we have N, or the number of circuits that we have. Uh, now provided that N is a square number, uh, instead of needing or N wires, it reduces the number of wires that we need down to uh, two times the square root of N, which is quite a massive reduction once you get down to, or once you get up to really large uh, number of circuits or number of bits of memory. Once again, simplifying the circuit down, uh, what we've basically got is a whole set of 64 memory bits. Uh, and we've got on the side here, our read, write and data lines. And we've got our vertical address uh, down the top here and the horizontal address lines across on the side here. Now what we can actually do from here is we can further reduce the number of wires that we need for the address lines. Uh, and that's because we only need one of these wires on at any given time. Now to do this, uh, let's say, let's just use these, the horizontal address lines as an example. So if we assign each one of these a number, what we can do is build some sort of circuit which takes in a binary number, uh, seeing as we only need numbers from zero to seven, this can be a three bit binary number because with three bits, what you can do is uh, represent up to eight values, which is exactly what we want for the address lines on the vertical and horizontal lines. So what we want the circuit to do is convert uh, a binary signal into uh, our eight input lines for the address. That's one, two, few, whoops. What the circuit needs to convert is it needs to convert uh, let's say what we've got here is zeros and ones down here, the binary numbers. Let's say a zero is a zero volt input and a one is a five volt input uh, on these three lines down here. We need to convert uh, all of these different combinations that we can have uh, to turn on uh, any one of these eight output lines. What this is actually is called a multiplexer, I believe, and we can do it pretty easily with our transistor logic gates. And here is that circuit. Basically, it's just a big set of AND gates which check for each of these uh, input conditions. You can see with this first one, these little circles before the AND gate are inverted inputs. So what this circuit, or this, this gate will do, is its output will be on if all of its inputs are off. And with this AND gate here, uh, its output will be on if only this wire is on, which aligns with our uh, input uh, configuration for the uh, one output. Same for the second AND gate, it'll only be on if this wire only is on. Uh, for the third AND gate, or the fourth really, um, it'll only be on if both of these wires are on and this one's off and so on, like this AND gate will be on if this wire's on and these two wires are off and it just continues right to uh, the eighth AND gate. Really we've just got one AND gate that checks for each of these conditions and does uh, an output accordingly. This is the circuit I've come up with for doing just that. Um, what each set of these three transistor lots are, each one of those is uh, it's its own AND gate, which uh, gives us our eight outputs, which I've listed down here. Uh, this isn't the final circuit that can actually be used. This is just one that I can build uh, on the breadboard so that it can light up a bunch of LEDs 
what we're actually going to have to use for the uh, the final design is circuit like this uh, which just has a bunch of buffers on the output so that it can actually handle uh, the small amount of power that it's going to have to output in order to run the memory uh, set but uh, we'll stick with the one that I built for the breadboard because I can show you that now so let's get this uh, over here it is actually a pretty big circuit it took me a fair while to build it on the breadboard and I used up like every wire I have and like pretty much all the resistors still have a few transistors left over but it took a while anyway uh, let's plug it in to show you how it works now what you can see right now is this LED is on. This is our uh, zero output. We've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and we've got our control switches down here, which are our binary uh, input, the three lines. So let's say if we, if we turn this one on, which will put the input to a one, you can see uh, that the one output goes on. And maybe if we change this to a binary three, uh, the three output turns on and so on. We can get all eight outputs. Start with zero, go with one, yep. Do two, yep. Do three, that's the third one. Uh, we'll do four, which is a little tricky. Yep, four, we can do five, we can do six, and we can do seven. So what we can do now with two of these uh, multiplexers, we can control all 16 of these input enable lines uh, with just six wires. So we've gone from 64 wires down to 16 wires, and now we're down to six wires to control all 64 bits of memory. And now six wires is actually the fewest number of wires that you can have to control 64 bits of memory. We can't actually uh, simplify this any further. But we have reduced, what is it, 67 wires all up down to what, six plus three. That's nine wires uh, to completely use 64 bits of memory. And there you go, that's, uh, that's multiplexers. So that's pretty much all uh, we actually need for... Um, constructing like a full block of memory. So we're pretty much done with memory. Uh, the next episode of the Computer from Transistors series should be about uh, actually computing stuff or doing actual calculations. Well, I mean, that is until we actually build like the, the memory compartment. But anyway, till then, see you later.